you've been talking about measuring carbon, trying to answer lots of questions. Um, it feels a little bit like there's more questions still than answers, mm -hmm. but you've been studying carbon a long time yeah. and so this is this is your niche yeah. so tell me tell us a little bit about where you started and then you even mentioned that really as a society we we've, we've been in this conversation yes. before yeah. so tell us so my carbon adventures started back in graduate school so as a master's student and a PhD student I was looking at different organic materials that were considered waste materials in the, the stream that they were in, but we were evaluating them as soil amendments to look at their potential to not only provide nutrients to the soil, but also as a potential mean of storing additional carbon in the soil. So a big focus of my research as a graduate student was looking at carbon cycling, carbon storage. At the, my advisor, Frank Hans, through both uh, master's and PhD, his career was mainly built on carbon, at least okay. the last 15 to 20 years of it. And so he was working on carbon in the late 90s, early 2000s with the Kyoto Protocol, um, Clean Air Acts, all of that. It really goes back to a carbon focus. And so this isn't the first time we've talked about carbon, right? Um, but I think it has a slightly different spin because we have been talking about soil health for the last five to six years. And really when we think about it, carbon is what's driving our soil health. It really is, it's stimulating microbial activity, it's adding to the chemical composition of the soil because it's improving the, the ability of the soil to hold on to nutrients. Um, and then from a physical standpoint, carbon is the main driver um, behind aggregate formation. So it's essentially gluing all of those soil particles together okay. and it's creating a healthier soil, not just from the biological standpoint, but both chemical and physical as well. One of the big questions is, so how do we measure yeah. our carbon? And it, th there's a lot of variables. There is. And I think the big debate right now is do Will we take the approach of using models to you know, estimate if we implement these certain practices, there's the potential to store this much carbon in our soil? By models, you mean like cover crops yeah. or so, no-till or strip-till? Exactly. So there are established models that are able to predict the amount of carbon that's going to be stored in the soil after implementing certain practices okay. like no-till or strip-till or implementing cover crops or crop rotations. Okay. Um, and so that's one approach. The second would be to actually measure the amount of carbon that's being stored in the soil. And so that would require someone, no one knows exactly who that Ooh. someone would okay. be, but someone to go out and measure the carbon in the soil to monitor over time how much carbon is being captured from the atmosphere and stored in the soil long term. As producers in this region, to be uh, most profitable from a system such as this, a modeling approach is going to be the best way to monitor, measure, predict how much carbon is going to be stored. Just because of our harsh environment, it's hard over time to build large, large amounts of carbon compared to other regions across the U.S. that receive more rainfall. And it all goes back to the amount of carbon that we're able to produce through our crops. So the more biomass we produce, the more carbon that's being captured from the atmosphere and greater potential for that carbon to be stored in the soil.